Right, today we're going to learn about gradient of a line. This is something that we have actually learned before when you were in secondary 2. But let's do a quick review. So let's recall, we use the word gradient of a line to indicate how steep a line is. As you can see here, we have four lines, T, S, R, and Q. We say that line T is steeper than all the other lines. This means that it has a largest gradient value. So the larger the gradient, the steeper it is. Line Q is the line that is the least steep. So you can see that you know it's right at the bottom, it's least steep. So I will ask you a question. Suppose you were asked to choose one of the lines to walk on. Which line would make it easiest for you? Now I hope you have actually chosen line Q because it's actually the least steep line, so it's the easiest that you will walk on. Okay, it's less steep. So we can use the following method to find gradient, which is just rise over run. This tells us how steep the line would be. So in this diagram, you will notice that I have a line segment that's in red. And what we can do is that we kind of like can draw a triangle and we can figure out how many units there are for the rise and for the run. So the rise in this diagram, as you can see, is six units. That's the vertical rise, all right, upright. For the for our horizontal run, you have two units. Gradient is rise over run. So what we have is 6 over 2, and we get the value of 3. Now, we don't need to add a negative sign, as this is an upward positive slope. From right, sorry, from left to right, we can see that the slope is going upwards. Right? It's like going uphill, so it's positive. Now, let's try this one. Okay, You, you can pause the video and try it for a while before you reveal the answers. When you're ready, press the play button. So for this question, you notice that uh, the triangle has been drawn for you. The vertical rise, there's three units, and there's seven units for the run. So gradient is rise over run, and we have three over seven. But my final answer, I'm going to add a negative because this is a downward negative slope. It's as if you're actually from the left to the right, you're going downhill. So that's why we add a negative to it. So what if I give you two coordinates instead? Find the gradient of the line passing through 0, 3, and 4, 1. So what you will notice is that we can actually plot out the point 0, 3, and 4, 1. Then what we can do is that we can connect them with the line segment and try to draw a triangle so that it makes it easier for us to see how much is the rise and how much is the run. So in this question, we have two units for the rise and four units for the run. Gradient is rise over run, which means that we have two over four. And we can reduce this to half. And again, you notice that I've added a negative sign as this is a downward negative slope. So let's try another question on your own. Find the gradient of the line passing through the points negative four, six, and five, three. Pause the video, try it out, and then check your answer. So let's check your answer now. So remember, we could actually plot out the two points. So we have the point negative 4, 6 in red, and 5, 3 in blue. Similarly, we can connect them with a line segment. And again, we form a triangle. And we find the rise, 3 units. The run, 9 units. Using the gradient formula, rise over run, we have 3 over 9, which can be reduced to 1 third. Again, we will add a negative sign as this is a downward negative slope. Downhill as you move from left to right. So is there another method of doing this? Well, we can also just find the difference in y and x values, which is actually the rise and the run as well. So what we can do is that we can use this uh, way of doing it, which is finding the difference in the y values between the two coordinates and putting it over the difference in the x values of the two coordinates. In this question, what we're going to do is that the coordinate on the right, the y value is actually 1. So to find a difference, we use a minus, and the other y value of the other coordinate is actually 4. So I'm taking the difference, 1 minus 4. I will also start with the coordinate on the right, and this time I use the x values. So the x value is 5. I take the difference, so I minus, 
But the other value, be very careful, is negative 2. As you know, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 5 minus negative 2, because of the double negatives, it becomes a positive, right? So you get negative 3 over 7. So what we can do is that we can also just use by pure difference. Difference in y and difference in x. But try to keep it such that you always start with the coordinate on the right and you find the difference with the coordinate on the left. Now, you try another question. Find the gradient of the line passing through 6, 4 and 3, 2. You can use any method that you like. So, please pause the video, try it out. Then when you're ready, press the play button to continue to check the answer. So, this is the answer. Firstly, of course, you could draw it out like what we have been doing. So once you have drawn it out, you can see that the rise is 2 units and the run is 3 units. Finding the gradient is just rise over run, 2 over 3. As this is a upward slope, there is no need to put a negative sign. The second method that we have just done was finding the difference, remember? So if we start with the coordinate on the right, the y value is actually 4. Then the other y value is 2, so we find the difference. 4 minus 2. The coordinate on the right, the x value is 6. The other coordinate on the left, the x value is 3. Finding the difference means we take 6 minus 3 and we also get the value of 3. So you can actually see that both methods actually work. So the main thing is that find one that is comfortable for you.